Well, it looks like that one female ostrich is having the best dust bath. Oh, we can join another one now. Now, there's various different reasons why, why animals and birds will do it. And sometimes it helps get rid of some of the parasites. But I think if you look at them, it just looks like it looks like it's really enjoyable and good fun. Probably feels quite good as well if you've got any itches. And scrape it along the, on the, along the ground. Now, ostriches love a good dust bath. Look at her getting her neck, scratching the bottom of her neck. Kathleen is wondering, can ostriches fly? Uh, no, Kathleen, unfortunately not. They're, they're too heavy. They are, they are definitely a ground-based bird. And they're capable of incredible speed. And that's how they get away from predators. And, uh, but they cannot fly. Oh, look at that one gawking, that female on the road there. Now, one of the things ostriches do, which well, I suppose is not strange if you're an ostrich, is uh, that they swallow stones to aid in their digestion. So they will swallow little bits of stone. Um, and they're also very, very good at going after little bits of shiny stuff. So uh, I left my fishing box open once on the farm. And I came back and the ostrich was trying to eat all the hooks. Of course, not very good for an ostrich hooks, but they seem to have a constitution of iron. So they will eat quite a lot of little rocks, quartz. Uh, they seem to be attracted to the shinier rocks. Now, there's, a, there's an old tale from uh, Namibia. And if you want to find, and it was also perpetrated by a South African comedian who made a movie about it. But it is true that in the past, diamonds have been found in ostrich droppings. They tend to uh, like to eat shiny things. Now that stone helps them in their, in their gullet, I mean in their, in their stomach, and helps ground up what they're eating. You might hear a little patter of rain on our roof. Now, Laurie is wondering, would an ostrich kick a predator if they were threatened? Laurie, absolutely, most definitely, that is their main form of defense. Um, and while I was just talking about the ostriches on, the, on, on our family farm, and uh, very good friends of ours had the farm next door. And uh, one of my parents' best friends, uh, he actually got kicked by a male ostrich in, in breeding plumage. They can be very aggressive. I've been chased up trees by them. I've spent two and a half hours setting up a tree with a fishing rod waiting for an angry male ostrich to go away. <laughs> it was not pleasant. Um, so th they will definitely kick and uh, they have got an incredibly sharp claw uh, or talon, I suppose, not really a claw. And uh, on and, and Jimmy, who was our neighbor, uh, uh, he had, I think, over 80 stitches in his leg from a single kick from a male ostrich. So they are definitely would kick a predator to defend themselves. But first and foremost, they'll try rely on their incredible speed. And probably get up to around 70 kilometers an hour. Now, that doesn't mean they don't get eaten. Uh, cheetah are quite fond of eating ostrich. Uh, lions will also eat ostrich. So it's not that they don't get eaten. Um, and they definitely do. Ruth is wondering, do ostriches really hide their heads in the sand? Uh, Ruth, they do not. Uh, I think it's, a, it's an old wives' tale. Um, I, I, there's never been a, a, an actual scientific record of an ostrich hiding their head in the sand. That, I can see where it probably comes if you look at that ostrich there. It looks like its head's under the sand, but it's not. It's just uh, picking at the ground. So, no, they, uh, they don't hide their heads in the sand. Ooh, he's feeling frisky. Now, this male sequestered himself a little harem of females. You can see that reddish tinge to his legs and his neck and his beak, uh, which means he is in breeding plumage. Now, like the impala, ostriches here do not have a set breeding season, so they will breed throughout the year, uh, just like the, uh, well, the impala. 
um, uh, buffalo, waterbuck, a lot of animals here, because of the high nutrients in the in the in the soil and the great grass, uh, will actually breed throughout the year and do not have a set breeding season. Roshni is wondering. Uh, she's heard it's true that ostrich eggs are so strong that if a human man were to stand upon them, they would not break. Well, I'd say an average human man, yes, if you got a fatty, I'm sure it would break. But uh, average human, and I think if I remember correctly, that a single ostrich egg is the equivalent to 36 hens' eggs. So a good meal. And uh, I know James has been talking quite a bit about the evolution of human beings today. And uh, a very important food source for early man and often found in middens. Now middens are, are what left over from a human encampment or a hominin encampment. Ostrich eggs, uh, ostrich egg shells were found so they were eaten by our ancestors. And a, a very interesting, uh, uh, just because James has been talking about it uh, today in particular, that a couple of, ooh, not so long ago, I read a very interesting article uh, about the evolution of man and uh, how we might have got it all wrong. So everyone has been arguing that there was a single point where man evolved from in Africa, a single area, whether it be southern or east Africa, depends on who you ask. But they have now found uh, bones, were actually found in the 60s, but they were incorrectly dated. And in, in Morocco, that is that puts the age of humans, uh, modern man, about 100,000 years earlier. So now closer to 350,000 years. And it sort of leads more to something I, I, I definitely believe in and, and makes more sense to me that rather than a, a single point of origin for humankind, uh, there was a, a evolution over the whole. Oh, so James did also talk about this. So I won't go on. So, you, so man evolved over the whole of Africa simultaneously rather than a single place. So, and... Uh, in a lot of uh, sort of early man, and, and in particularly in the San culture from southern Africa up into Angola, ostriches are a very important for, for a source of food in terms of their eggs, but also their eggs are really important storage units, for, particularly for water. And uh, people would cache um, ostrich eggs full of water all over um, the Kalahari Desert and whatnot, so they would have water in time of need. Stop it with a special plant, uh, generally wild sage. Uh, to keep it fresh. Now the Khadzeba, which are a very primitive uh, people from not too far from here in Tanzania, also use ostrich eggs, uh, very importantly to store water uh, and other things that they might need. Also for jewelry and decoration, ostrich eggs uh, were very, very popular and are still very popular. Now I've got a question for all of you. Uh, where in the world are the most ostriches? What? country or actually uh, what country in the world are the most ostriches if you know the answer hashtag safari live on twitter let's see i think i have told told you guys before but let's see who was listening and if you can even tell me even more particularly where the most ostriches in the world are i'll be suitably impressed Now, those ostriches are going to move off. We're going to do the same. We're still looking for leopard. So there's a wonderful little lugger. And I know James explained what a lugger is. 